Hi, my name is Michael Gormley, and this is a little bit of my testimony. As American prophet and wise man, the rapper DMX, one time said in the voice of God, I may not come when you want, but yo, I'm always on time. That line summarizes my testimony. See, I believe that God is preparing us to do wonderful and great things, but we, because we don't have his divine insight, we often uh, don't see what he's doing in our lives. When I was a young um, when I was young, being raised in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, my parents were great Catholics, and they raised us in a devout Catholic home. My dad was in the Knights of Columbus. My mom was the director of religious education. I practically came out of the womb with a rosary in my hand and a full beard. Um, growing up, every single day, we would pray not just the rosary, but the scriptural rosary, taking a verse with every Hail Mary and memorizing the scripture verses. When I was young, I used to be, complain all the time how boring it was and all this stuff. But I did look forward to it because it was an important thing with my family. Growing up, I, uh, I was a minority in my neighborhood uh, and in my community. Catholics were not very popular uh, in Broken Arrow. When my parish priest, was, when they first came over, they were missionary priests from Poland. They were Polish Capuchin Franciscan monks. And they were imprisoned in the 1940s under the Nazi regime when they invaded Poland. They were, their camp was liberated by soldiers from Broken Arrow, and out of a debt of gratitude, they got permission to set up a missionary church in Oklahoma. It was amazing. And they were greeted by the Ku Klux Klan burning crosses in front of these Polish papists. It was very difficult in this, you know, by the time I came around, the, the overt racism and bigotry and whatnot of the Ku Klux Klan had gone. But there was still sermon series that were going on around town that would be like, why are Catholics in a cult? Or uh, why are Catholics not Christians? And I would get confronted at school. So I had, I'll never forget this one day, a young girl named Nicole. I was in third grade, standing by the swing set. She comes up to me and tells me that we worship Mary. And I say, we don't worship Mary, we honor Mary. All the honor in the world doesn't equal one ounce of worship. She didn't believe me, she kept telling me that I worship Mary. We drew it at a stalemate, we went back inside to social studies. And there my teacher, who went to one of these churches with these types of sermon series, started off talking about the 13 colonies. And that day, of all the colonies we could have talked about, that day we talked about Maryland. And this is literally what she said. Maryland got its name because it was filled with a bunch of Catholics. And we know how Catholics feel about Mary, right? This was part of the weirdness of growing up. But because of things like that scriptural rosary, I had the biblical foundations in order to speak truth to my friends and, and, and have a discussion based on sacred scripture. Not only did it help with defending my faith, but ultimately it would lead to the salvation of my soul. You see, when I was young, I was exposed to hardcore explicit pornography by the older boys in our neighborhood. It took a, uh, a deep grasp on my heart, on my life for years. Um, trying to find freedom by more willpower and more this, more that, it was getting me nowhere. Until finally, as a young adult, I went to confession. And there, the Franciscan friars at the Franciscan University of Steubenville would walk me, would accompany me through finding freedom from my habitual sin. And it was amazing. And the best part about it all was I was relying on those same scripture verses that I had learned as a kid. So this is what I want to say in summary. I don't know your life, I don't know your story, but I do know this. God can work for the good for all those who love him. And in my life, what I thought was boring and these memorized prayers and this memorization of scripture ended up becoming the foundation that would bring me freedom. For every time I struggled with sin, I could turn back not just to the rosary beads, but also to sacred scripture, reciting it and clinging on to them as I would fight temptation and overcome uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil to find new and beautiful freedom in my relationship with God. So in summary, don't be obsessed about knowing everything. Only God has infallible knowledge about your life. What he gives us is a glimpse like headlights on a dark country road. We know the path right in front of us. That's all we need to worry about. Everything else is trustful surrender. God love you.